guest is a Court TV regular. You know him well, our good friend, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, David Schwartz. Good morning, David. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Vinny. All right, David, should Deborah Lefebvre, if this 17 year old girl comes in on the new date and says she talked to me about sex in the workplace, should Deborah Lefebvre be thrown into prison? Absolutely not, Lisa. Absolutely not. This is not, I mean, this is a violation of probation. She had a conversation with a 17-year-old. I mean, please, this is this is ridiculous. 17 is a minor. What if yeah, Deborah LeFave was a shifty-eyed old man who was a sex offender? Would you feel differently? To just have a conversation, as far as that being a violation of probation, if your coworker, if you're working in a restaurant and you have a conversation with a coworker, no, I wouldn't think that would be a violation of probation. What if she I was a shifty-eyed old man who had had sex with a 14-year-old girl, was got out on probation? One of the terms was "don't talk about sex with children." Would you feel differently? Well, I mean, technically, that could be if that's if that's a condition of probation. We all know it is. Technically, that's one it, could, of her conditions. it could it could be a violation. And yes, there is a double standard. And and um, I just you know it's 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 been my position all along that the impact on this particular victim is a lot less than it, if it was a 15, 14 year old. Well, girl. let's go to Dr. Jeffrey Gardier on I that. I know he then. disagrees. Dr. With Dr. Me. Jeff, is it different if a little boy is sexually abused versus a little girl? Uh, there is a difference, but I wouldn't say that a boy being a victim is uh, has less impact on his life than a girl being a victim. The fact is, as you said, it, Lisa, they have warped ideas about uh, the boys uh, who go through this have warped ideas about sexuality. They don't relate in a uh, healthy manner to females, and they will have issues in their marriages later on. Uh, David is a friend of mine, and we just do not see eye to eye on this thing. I think Debbie Lefebvre was given a big break by getting house arrest instead of going to jail and because of that now they are being very very tough on her mm -hmm. uh, having conversations with a 16 year old a 15 year I don't care if it's if it's someone who's a minor uh, even though we are talking about two women here it's inappropriate I wouldn't uh, even if there was a woman who was not a sex offender having those sorts of conversations with a 17 year old talking about their boyfriends and sex and so on I, my question would be who are you to have these conversations without my permission what is it that you're telling this person as an adult mm -hmm. and we're talking about a sex offender here so I think there are risks uh, and risk factors her lawyer once said that Deborah Lefebvre was too pretty for prison and after cutting a deal Lefebvre avoided jail time instead she received house arrest and probation so today's question of the day is do good-looking people get treated differently by society Please send us your answers. Just log on to CourtTVNews.com. Now, part of this deal was community control, which is house arrest. David Schwartz here in New York. All right. This is the way it works. She wakes up in the morning, has breakfast, goes to work. When she's done with work, she goes home. She's got a curfew of about 10 o'clock. And then she goes to sleep, and anyone can come and go and visit her at home. If she has a boyfriend, he can come and visit, and they can do whatever they want to do. And then she goes to sleep, wakes up, and does the same thing the next day. How is this? How is this punishment for a teacher sleeping with oh, a please. student? Oh, okay. How is this I mean, punishment? I mean, first, please. First of, first of all, Vinny. How does this send a message to Debbie all, it's, a, it's a first arrest. And most of the time when we have a, a, a first arrest. First sexual assault. And, and, let me, and let me tell you let me tell you something. This is no walk in the park. It's not easy being a, a having sexual offender status. It's almost she's a walk gonna, in the beach. She's going to have to walk around. You know, I, I, you know what, Vinny? Please. I mean, think of, think of little Vinny Politan. Little Vinny Politan, age 14 years old sitting in that math class little Vinny with the hormones raging everything going crazy you blaming you know, the victim I, I don't, are you blaming the victim no I'm not blaming the victim but 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 I don't buy into all these statistics Dr. Gardier could talk about whatever he wants well you why know, doesn't the law what? recognize it then the law yeah. is the law David isn't it I, I understand that she pled guilty Lady there is justice a, is blind but Vinny there's a guilty plea here there is a guilty plea here she will never teach again she will have sex uh, sex offender status she has to abide by the conditions of probation and believe me this is no big deal this is not com going out and committing another crime this is not a big deal what's going on here but my point is I, I guarantee you could find just as many um, 
uh, for, uh, pe men who, who didn't sleep with their teachers when they were 14, who also have marital problems, who also have it's relationship problems. It's not the same problems. kind of problems, though. Not the, and I'll tell you why, you know, I'll tell you why, David, from, just put, put aside the psychological, because that's yeah. Dr. Jeffs, all right? Yeah. An adult has a lot of power that a child doesn't have. An adult has the power to have a job, to drive, to drink, to vote, and, and hopefully increased knowledge and intelligence. The relationship is inherently unequal because the adult has so much more power than a minor. When you add on top of that the power that a teacher has over a student, it's an unhealthy relationship. It doesn't matter how pretty she is. Later on in life, I guarantee you, as this kid grows up, he's going to realize that one of his first, if not his first, sexual experience was an inherently unequal power imbalanced kind of relationship where he didn't have a lot of say he didn't have a lot of control and by the way there's a tape of her saying that she didn't even think they should be using condoms when they had sex now that is an unhealthy relationship and that's why she was convicted that's why she pleaded right. guilty to a criminal offense. The only difference between Deborah Lefebvre and a shifty-eyed old man who does the same thing with the 14-year-old girl is that she's very attractive and so she got a pass. And Dr. Jeff, we saw what happened with Mary Kay Letourneau when she also, very blonde, pretty, had sex with an underage kid and as a teacher, she got a pass, she got out and she reoffended. She got a very short, I think, six months in jail initially. She got out, she reoffended, then she went back in for seven months, and everybody was so surprised. Oh my goodness, I can't believe she reoffended. Well, you know what? I wasn't surprised with Mary Kay Letourneau, and I wasn't surprised when I got a call last week that Deborah Lefebvre was accused of this violation because sex offenders are sex offenders, and they have one of the highest recidivist rates of any felons. Am I right, Dr. Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. Different yeah. than what's alleged here against Deborah Lefebvre. I mean, Mary Kay Letourneau went out and had sex in a car with Vili Falau, yeah. unprotected sex, which resulted in a pregnancy, and then she did it again. It resulted in the second pregnancy. Uh, Mary Kay, Le I mean, uh, Deborah Lefebvre is only accused of having a conversation. Apples and oranges, Lisa, and that's what we have to remember. No two cases are ever the same. You have to compare and contrast. You heard the judge in the Letourneau case. It was an egregious violation, and clearly it was an egregious violation. She went out, had sex with the same exact victim. Who of was still a minor. Uh, who was still a minor. Of course, that's, that's a serious, egregious violation. Compare and contrast it to the Lefebvre uh, case right now, where she merely had a conversation with a co-worker who's 17 years old. And guess what? We haven't had the hearing yet. Right. We don't know what, what took place during that right. conversation. The attorney has stated that he was going to he's going to vigorously defend that 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 case. Yeah, and the 17 so, year old may come in and say this didn't happen. Didn't happen. Or so, it's all being blown out of proportion. I said something and she, you know, walked away. I mean, who knows? We don't know yet, and that's true. And she is innocent until proven guilty. But David, the idea of community control. Yeah. Let's talk about that because it's effectively like being in prison. It's basically saying to Deborah Lefebvre, look, we're giving you an opportunity. Do not blow it. You have to keep your nose clean. You have to follow all 48 uh, provisions of this release. I mean, this is not like an ordinary person talking to a 17-year-old about sex. This is somebody who's got to follow a very strict set of rules. Otherwise, she goes right to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200, right? Well, again, there are different degrees of violations. And and the, ju the, the judge has great discretion what the punishment uh, should be for a violation. So if the judge does determine that this is a violation, violation in this case, how serious is it? And compared to the Letourneau case, is it egregious? I don't think so, Lisa. So if the judge wants to prove a point and throw her in jail for a week, you know, maybe that would be the, the proper punishment just to teach her a lesson that she has to abide by all the conditions of probation. But to start giving her some sort of sentence that's way out of whack compared to, with, to, compared to the behavior here, which is merely having a conversation with a 17-year-old, you know, it, it, that should not take place. All right, Dr. Jeff, I want to ask.